Greetings, I am Herbert Erberderb, and today I'm going to build the German tractor D8506 Mod 1937 from Mini Art. This is, as you can see from the picture, a pretty old style tractor, and I bought it because at the time I was playing a lot of Farm Sim 22, and I figured some farming equipment would be an interesting change. Anyway, I did a what's in the box video a while ago, so if you'd like to have a look at the sprues and other things that are in the box, there's a link to that video in the description below. But for now, less waffling and more gluing together of bits of plastic. Are you even capable of less waffling, Herbert? No. I start with the, I'm assuming this is the transmission. It's something. Before gluing the two halves together, this pair of short rods needs to be installed. This is simple enough to do, but you should do it before the next step, which, as you might have guessed, is gluing the two halves of this thing together. You may need to kajigger the two rods so the two halves will go together and apply a little pressure, but it's nothing too challenging. I'm sure you're up to it. This next assembly is quite similar, only there's just a single rod. Same thing though, you may need to kajigger the rod so the two halves of the main bit can go together. On this side there's a nice smiley face. Isn't that wonderful? Next, on the end of the first assembly, this plate is glued into place, and there's keying to help with it. Then, onto the other side of that plate, I glue the second assembly into place. This forms the main base, I guess you might call it, of the tractor. Into the bottom of that assembly I glue this thing, whatever it is. I did have a fair bit of difficulty with this, it just doesn't seem to want to sit in place nicely, and it took a bunch of nudging and fiddling before it was in a place that seemed correct. Next, these doodads, which will eventually hold wheels, go into place here. There's keying to help you get the correct positioning. Obviously there's one of these on each side, unless you are doing it wrong, I guess. Here's a tiny little something or other, which goes on here. I'm not at all sure what it is, but it slots onto the raised bit and isn't too difficult to get into place. Then I add another small doodad just behind that part. It took a little bit of nudging to get into the right spot, but again, nothing too difficult. Another tiny bit, the function of which again I have no idea, goes on above that little cylinder thing. Yet again a little nudging was needed, but nothing too tricky. This plate thing goes on here. I wasn't sure if it fit correctly because of that gap at the top of it, but this is fine. That gap will be covered up later on. I follow that by gluing this plate into place. It's got keying so you can get it close to the right spot. There is a little bit of play to it though, so you might have to eyeball it a bit to get it straight. Onto the D-shaped keying I glue this mount for a towing hitch. If you apply pressure to this you'll need to put a finger or something behind it, otherwise you'll probably shift that plate out of place, and that would just be plain awful. Into the hitch mount I glue the hitch. The keying is there to make sure you get this the right way around. Next I assemble this dome thing. I don't know what this is. You don't know what anything is! That's true, I don't. Whatever it is though, it consists of two parts that go together rather easily. I did find I had to apply a fair bit of pressure to this to minimise the gap, but eventually I was happy enough with it. And now, the first of the photo etch. The first one here is, well, it's like the next two really, but it's a bit bigger. The little protrusion on this needs to be bent around into a U shape, and I have bent it, but it's not perfectly rounded. I figure this is fine, and maybe it's a little bit damaged or something. The bending is the same for all three parts. I figured before gluing these to the model I should actually glue the domey thing into place. There's keying for this so it's pretty hard to put this on incorrectly. Then I glue the photo etch into place. Because these are metal I use super glue. The two smaller ones go on either side with the curly uppy bit on the bottom. At this point it is kind of hard to tell which way is the bottom, but you'll figure it out. The bigger piece of photo etch goes on the bottom with the bend toward the front. They're probably not on perfectly, but they are on. Next, we need to add a bolt. This is one that you have to shave off the sprue, which I personally find a little bit annoying. This is a tiny piece, and if you successfully shave this off the sprue, and don't drop it, it can be glued into place here. This isn't really the most difficult thing to do, but it does seem a little bit less than necessary, and I'm not totally sure why this couldn't be moulded on the part. Oh well. 
Moving on, I follow that by installing this thingamajigger. It pretty much just drops into place right here. Then there's a bolt which goes in through that hole, and the threaded bit should be facing forward like so. It takes a little bit of kajiggering to get this nice and straight, but again it's nothing too challenging. Next I glue this little doohickey into place here, and then between the end of that and this little bit, jeez great descriptions Herbert, thank you, we add this little springy looking thing. This is a little bit fiddly, but if you're careful it's not too difficult. There's going to be just a few more little fiddly bits like this, so I guess strap in and get used to me saying things are fiddly. Maybe make a drinking game out of it. Every time I say fiddly, take a shot. Actually no, don't do that, I don't want you to die of alcohol poisoning. And here's our next fiddly thing. As I said before, if you're careful it's easy enough to get this into place. As the kids are always saying, slow and steady wins the race. Slightly less delicate, the engine cover part of the tractor. You might call it a hood. I start by gluing the rear part of the hood into place. This is pretty simple thanks to the keying. The sides go on next, and these also go into place quite easily. I did accidentally press a little bit too much on the right hand side and now the top bit has a very small overhang in the middle, but it still works fine, and maybe we can just say this is farming damage. You know, instead of battle damage. It makes sense to then attach the front bit. A little pressure was needed, but this goes on pretty easily. And after that, we've got ourselves a nice hoodie looking hood bit. Then I realised I'd made a mistake. God damn it, Herbert! That little recess on the inside of the rear of the hood part that looks like it's meant to be drilled out, is in fact meant to be drilled out. It wasn't especially easy to get my drill in there, so I had to go in on an angle. Not a big problem, the hole is where it needs to be, though I would recommend drilling the hole before putting the parts together. I would have done that if I were paying better attention to the instructions. Lesson learned, maybe. Next, next I install a series of, I guess you would call them caps. We've got this big one here, a smaller one up here, and then next to the first one, another smaller one. These are all rather easy to place and they sit nicely in the recesses. Then another one here on the front. This one, I assume, is for radiator water, and it's got some little nubbins on it to form a hinge, so do be sure to put it around the right way. So how about a little more photo etch? Sure, why not? First I glue, again with super glue, because metal, I glue this license plate holder on the front here. It's not quite keyed, but those nubbins on either side kind of work as a guide. As far as photo etch goes, these parts aren't too difficult. There's no bending, you've just got to get them in the right place, before the glue bonds. Obviously the installation of the lands and bulldog plates are the same as the license plate one, just in different positions. The plates are probably not absolutely perfect, but they are on, and I think they look rather good. Now that the hood is done, more or less, it's time to attach the engine framey bit. This part is pretty well guided into place by the shape of the round part of the framey thing, so it's quite easy to not do this wrong. On the front of the bulby duva thing, I glue this thing. It looks like a bolt, I guess maybe it's an attachment point or something like that. It took a bit of nudging to make it nice and straight. Also be careful, because this is quite a small bit. I suspect it could quite easily fall into the jaws of the carpet monster, and nobody wants to feed that bastard. Next I add this little bar thing which seems to be related to that crank bit. I'm assuming this has something to do with the brakes. Even tractors need to stop sometimes. There's another one of these for the other side, but we'll put that on later. I follow that by attaching this pedal here. It's a bit delicate and I wasn't totally sure about the positioning. It's kind of hard to tell exactly where it should be, and I will have to adjust it a bit later, but it's on for now and that's good. Surprising nobody, I have no idea what this thing is, but whatever it is it goes into place nice and easily, and it's got a D-shaped keying, so it's easy to get it right. I put another pedal on the other side because a good tractor has pedals on both sides. Nobody says that Herbert! They do now. Like the other pedal, I'm not totally sure it's in exactly the right place, but it looks close compared to what the instructions are showing. 
This control rod, for controlling engine related things probably, goes on next. This one isn't quite as fiddly as some of the other rods, but it is still quite thin and you should try to be gentle with it to avoid breakage. And because pedals are so fun, let's add another one. This one's got a bit more doodattery at the bottom, but it should line up with the other one on the right side, so I did my best to get them right next to each other. It's a bit fiddly, of course, but eventually I got there. Then I add that other braking, probably related rod that I know you've all been waiting for. I hear tractor drivers find it comfortable to sit while tractoring, so I put together this very comfortable looking seat. The bar thing at the bottom slots nicely into place, and so does the seat back, though the back did need a little bit of fiddling to get it to sit in the right place. Very seat. Very, very comfortable looking. I think you're lying. It actually looks uncomfortable. Maybe just a little bit. Next, I glue the lid on the end of this box thing, which I suspect is for the tractor driver's snacks. This goes on the bottom of the driver's area floor. It might be called a cab, Herbert. Well, let's attach that to the cab floor now then. There's a little tab on the bottom of this which helps with positioning. I then test fit the floor. Actually, there's a lot of test fitting that goes on that isn't shown in the video. But at this particular time, I'm test fitting the floor just to see how it interacts with the pedals. I decided to move the one on the left forwards just a little bit. So I apply glue where it connects to the model and gently nudge it forwards a bit. You've got to be slow and careful when doing this, otherwise it'll just break. Then it's time to glue the floor into place. This is really quite easy, though you might need to apply pressure and hold it for a bit so no unwanted gaps form. Time for some controls, so the tractor can be controlled. First, this little knobby thing, whatever it is. This is tiny and fiddly, but maybe not the hardest thing to install. Again, it's something the carpet monster is salivating over, so be careful not to drop it. Then comes this foot pedal, or what I'm assuming is a foot pedal anyway. I nudge it around into what looks to be the correct position that the instructions want, but it does look like it would be kind of hard to use with your foot. But what would I know? I'm not a tractorologist, I'm just some guy that glues bits of plastic together. Next, I add what looks a bit like a switch lever for railway tracks. I'm assuming this is for raising and lowering the rear thing, but even if I'm wrong, it's easy to install. Into the hole I drilled in the rear wall, I add this, what I think is some sort of instrument. I guess a rev counter? It took a bit of fiddling, but I got it on pretty neatly. You could probably cut the guide pin off of this and then glue it on if you forgot to drill the mounting hole. Fortunately, I remembered in time. Unfortunately, it's time to cover up that smiley face. I glue this thing on, which is presumably the rear cover of a part that contains either a belt or a chain connected to the flywheel, and it's guided into place nice and easy thanks to the keying. Then, over that, also guided by the keying, is the outer part of the whatever you would call this. A little pressure was needed to get it on as gap free as I could, but that's not really unexpected and it looks decent anyway. Back to the controls. I add this gear shifter, I assume it's a gear shifter. If it's not, it's a lever with a little knobby bit on the end. I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere. And here's another one. These aren't too difficult to place, you just need to fiddle around with them a bit. Of course, I might have their positions slightly wrong, and some tractor nerd is probably Oh, you can't put that in that position with that lever there, it wouldn't engage! But that's all right by me, I'm not that worried about that. Then I install this thing, which is the steering column. It looks a bit odd to me being off-centre, but that's where it goes, and I suppose it does make sense that the steering stuff wouldn't go through the centre where the engine is. The spring mounting for the driver's seat goes on next, and this is also off-centre to line up with the steering wheel. It would be kind of obnoxious to have to lean over in your seat to steer all the time. On the right side of the tractor we have a smiley face with no eyes. It's not really a smiley face then, is it Herbert? It's just a D-shape. This case thingy goes over the top of that, and like on the other side, it's easily guided by the keying. You'll notice this doesn't have the cap detail in the center, but there is a little tab, and that should be facing downward. Simple enough. Now that the seat mount has had a chance to bond into place, I add the seat, and the long bar thing helps with getting the seat on nice and straight. 
It looks decent enough, though I wouldn't really want to sit in it bouncing around for hours and hours. Next I add another lever. I've obviously got no idea what it's for, but it's on and it is quite levery. The lever has to go on before the next step, otherwise it'll be really annoying to try and put on. That next step is adding the cab walls. This is fairly simple. I glue the part onto the wheel hub first, then kajigga the wall bit into the correct spot and add some glue. The glue will make sure it stays together. Yeah we know what glue does Herbert, idiot! I apply a little pressure so it's as gap free as possible and we've got ourselves a nice little wall. The installation is, unsurprisingly, the same for the one on the left side. Very good. Next it's time for some more photo etch. Just a couple of little bracket things with a bend in them. However, I am doing it wrong here. For some reason there's a mounting pin on both sides of the plastic part and the first time I glued the brackets onto the wrong side. Good thing superglue bonds are easy to break. I just removed them and glued them onto the correct side once I noticed the error. Why not install that assembly next? I'm not worrying about joining the metal parts to the tractor just yet, I'm just gluing the plastic parts together. And the reason I'm doing this and not gluing the photo etch into place is to allow the plastic cement to set up properly, that way it'll be nice and strong when I glue the metal parts on. The metal might need a bit of bending and a good completely bonded plastic bit means it won't come apart from the pressure of bending the metal. In the meantime I add some bits to this thing which will go on the front of the tractor. I attach the towing hitch here and it took a bit of nudging to get it to sit nice and straight. Then I add these little whatever they are's here. There's two of them and the only thing that makes them difficult to attach is the fact that they're tiny. Next I give this little pipey thing a nice hat and who doesn't want a nice hat? This is pretty easy to do and I think this thing might be an air intake. I follow that by assembling the exhaust. Onto this little curvy bit at the bottom I add this ring with bolts, which is about as simple as it looks. Onto that goes the large, I guess you would say the main part of the muffler and I try to get this lined up as straight as I can. On top we get this little cone shaped bit and it took a bit of pressure but it's not especially difficult to install. The final part is the little pipe bit on top of the muffler. Nothing too tricky here and we end up with a nice little exhaust pipe. And now there's been enough time for the plastic to bond so I add some super glue and bend the little bracket thingies on this assembly into place. It's not all perfectly straight and neat but that's okay. I would imagine this stuff under here would easily get bent through use and it probably won't be as noticeable once the wheels are on anyway. Now why not attach those things I just put together? The air intake goes on this little square mounting here and that's quite simple. The exhaust was a little bit trickier. It's kind of an odd shape for applying pressure to and there's enough play in the part that you can inadvertently mount it at slightly odd angles. It looks fine at the moment but this will later interfere with the headlamps a bit so do take that into consideration when installing the exhaust. How about a bit more photo etch? It sounds like you're really excited about photo etch! Hmm. This one is pretty simple. It's just a pair of flat brackets, I guess you might call them, and they mount onto a pair of nubbins here. Simple enough. On top of the leaf springs there's a couple of little retainers, I guess you would call those, that hold the leaf spring thing together. It's a little bit fiddly because of the small parts, but if you put them on the right way up they're not that difficult to install. Then we add the little mounts. These are for the front wheels. They clip into place and are held with friction so you could probably make the wheels movable. We'll see how it might be a bit difficult to have the front wheels anything but facing forward in a bit. In the meantime I attach the triangular front hitch thing to this assembly. I didn't film it though because I'm a ding dong, but this is what it looks like anyway. Next I attach this piece of steering related gear. It connects to both of the front wheelie dealies which kind of makes it difficult to have movable steering. Not a big deal, just another thing to note I guess. Onto this thing on the bottom of the tractor I install this thing which is part of the mounting for the steering axle. I then tried to attach said steering axle. You need to connect it onto that bolt thing we glued into that bracket a while ago. However it was kind of hard to get into place and I was concerned I might break something. The solution was just to trim down the end of the bolt. This made it a lot easier to install the steering axle. 
It took a bit of nudging and fiddling to get all of the connection points into place, and the front towing hitch to not be angled upward, but I got it all together, and it looks pretty decent. Next, this rod, which I assume forms part of the steering mechanism. I had a bit of a difficult time with this, a large portion of which was the fact that I couldn't quite tell from the instructions how this bar should be connected at the front of the tractor. I did a bit of fiddling and umming and ahhing and I think I got it right in the end. Next, I add the headlamps, which are an optional part. If you don't want to use them, there's a couple of small photo etch plates that should instead be installed in the spots where the headlamps attach to the front of the tractor. You should be able to see here how the exhaust pipe kind of interferes with the headlamps. So mine probably aren't perfect, but they are on and they are headlampy. Also, I've left the clear lenses out until after painting. Now seems like a really good time for wheels. The big rear wheels go together in a kind of interesting way, and it's not particularly difficult. You just have to line the teethy looking bits up correctly. Plenty of glue and a little bit of pressure, and both wheels go together nice and easily. I would suggest paying attention to the tread, just so that the tyres have the tread facing the same way on either side. I assume that's important. The front wheels are even more interesting, and I haven't seen wheels that go together like this before. As I assume you can see, they go together in layers, would be the way I would describe it, I guess. The only real trick here is to make sure that you put the parts together in the correct order, and the instructions should be able to help you with this. A little bit of extra glue between the gaps in the tread and some pressure, and everything's together. I leave those to bond and add the final piece of photo etch. This is a part that you either bend or don't bend, depending on what you want. You'd bend the little protrusion to model this part open. I'm leaving mine closed, so no bending is required. Once it's in place, the little cap goes on the end. This is the starter, so it opens when the tractor is started, and the steering wheel doubles as the starter handle. Sounds laborious and kind of dangerous if you get your hand caught in it, but if you want, you could glue the steering wheel into this position to represent a tractor that's about to be started. Clearly I've chosen not to do that, so I glue the steering wheel onto the steering column. It's easy enough to get this into place. The annoying part is the teeny tiny little nubbin that goes onto the centre of the steering wheel. To be honest, I'm surprised I didn't end up losing this part. I did hear the carpet monster salivating over it quite loudly. We put all of that effort into the wheels a few moments ago, so we might as well attach them. Before the rear wheels can go on, we've got these thingies, which I assume are braking related. It's a little bit fiddly to get the rod thing into its mounting hole, but once it's there, the parts go into place nice and easy. Obviously there's one of these for either side, and then we simply glue the wheels on. Do make sure that you've got them facing around the right way, otherwise it'll look a bit silly. And finally, the front wheels. These just go straight onto the hub thingies, and it's pretty easy, though you'll probably have to do a bit of nudging to make sure they're straight. I would caution against applying too much pressure here. The entire steering axle assembly is kind of weak, so be careful not to break it. And that's it. The 35th scale German tractor D8506 Mod 1937 by Mini Art is now completed. I think this is a really cool little model, and I'm rather happy with it. As usual, I have made a couple of mistakes, but none of them were especially severe, and I don't think the final appearance of the model has really been affected. Something that does affect the appearance a little bit is that there's a couple of places the instructions say to add some little cable-y things to. However, there aren't any included, so you've got to scratch build them. I didn't have anything appropriate when I was doing this build, and the cables would be rather small, so I feel like it's pretty easy to get away with just omitting them. Obviously I haven't done anything about that yet, but if I do, I guess you'll know about that in 50 years when I get around to painting this thing. Despite that, I think the tractor looks rather good, and actually I like it so much that I might paint it a bit sooner than 50 years. Still, probably don't hold your breath. I really like the level of detail all of those bars and rods and stuff give the model. Sure, it does make it a bit delicate to handle, and the rods are really easy to break. I did break a couple of them, and the eagle-eyed amongst you might be able to see where those parts were broken. 
those small fiddly parts do make the model a bit challenging, so it's probably not the best kit for a beginner modeler, but if you've put together a few kits and you've got some experience, you might be up to the challenge. I certainly enjoyed it, though I probably did complain a little bit about some of the fiddliness on stream, but overall it was an enjoyable little project. It did take a fair while to finish it, I'm not exactly sure how many streams I did, but this is the sort of project where you might spend a few evenings on it, especially if you're putting it together carefully, which I would suggest doing. Okay, so overall I feel very good about this kit, and I'll definitely be doing more mini art stuff in the future. I'd also really like to do more farming equipment, and before I start waffling too much, I think that's it for today. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. If you want to watch me build kits like this one live on stream, head on over to my Twitch channel, the link is in the description below. And if you've not already done so, why not subscribe here on YouTube for the low low price of zero dollars. Or if you've got the means and you want to help Herbert Herbert up do Herbert Herbert up things, and see my videos a bit early, consider becoming a patron. You can find links to Patreon, and all of my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. As always, I shall return soon, so until then, be excellent to each other, have an amazing day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.